So to actually complete these chemical, or to explain these balancing steps, it's probably easier that I just show you a question and work through it with you, rather than actually trying to explain each step in an abstract way. So this is the best way to look at balancing these chemical equations. So we've got this fuel, ethane, and it reacts with oxygen to give you CO2 and H2O. So we want to write a balanced equation for this. So from the question, we know that the reactants are C2H6 and O2, and the products are CO2 and H2O. Okay. So if we were to put it into a general equation, we'd have this, A times the fuel, plus B times the oxygen molecules, gives you C times CO2 molecules and D times H2O. Okay. So what these numbers A, B, C and D mean are just how many of these molecules do we need. Okay, so if I needed one H2O molecule and six CO2, uh, or six CO2, then C would be six and D would be one. Okay, so we're looking to find A, B, C and D. That's the goal of this whole process. Okay, so these numbers A, B, C, and D multiply by the number of elements in a molecule. For instance, if B is 6, then the number of oxygen atoms on the reactant side is 6 times 2, 6 times 2, which gives you 12. Okay, so if you've got 6 O2 molecules, then you've got and 2 oxygen atoms per O2 molecule, then you've just got 6 times 2 oxygen atom, which means you've got 12. Okay. So in the general case, this one, the number of C atoms on the reactant side is 2 times A, 2 times A, which is the same as 2A. Okay. So this is just algebra, Okay, just very, very basic algebra. That's all we have to deal with here. So now what are the steps? So the step one is take either elemental metals or the most complex molecule and set its coefficient to one. Okay, so what that means is look for single element metals. So if I saw like a Cu here, okay, if, if that was our actual equation, then, and it'd be like an E here, then E would be one, okay? That's what the first step means. Just take any elemental metal, just the first elemental metal that you can find, and set its coefficient, E, to 1, okay? Now, obviously this one doesn't have any metals in it. You can't see any metals. You can see a fuel, oxygen, CO2, H2O, then none of those are metals. So what you do is you set the most complex molecule, set the coefficient of that molecule to 1. So if there's no elemental metals, then look for the most complex metal, uh, most complex molecule. So if you look at this, which one do you think is the most complex? Well, I think this one is. So I put A equals one, okay? Now, the choice here is arbitrary. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter. I could set C to be one, D to be one, B to be one, it doesn't matter. The only difference is that it may give you more work later on. So that's why I decided to show you this method, okay? So here's our equation and it becomes, it's because A equals one, okay? So this equation goes to this one. You can see A has become one, so we just ignore it. We don't leave it there. So like I said, you can turn any of them to one, but the most complex molecule or the, the elemental metal is usually the best choice. So now this next step is sort of a half step. You don't have to do this. You don't have to write this down, but this will help you a lot. So figure out which elements appear in only one molecule on the product side and one on the reactant side. So what that means is, if you look at this, oxygen appears once on the left-hand side, so it appears only in this one, but oxygen appears in this molecule and this molecule on the right-hand side, okay? So you can see that happens, right? But what we want is we only want it to appear once, okay? So we're looking for elements that only appear once on either side. So you can see carbon appears in this molecule and carbon appears in this molecule. So that's good. That's something that we want to take note of. Hydrogen appears in this molecule and this molecule, but it only appears once on either side. So that's good again. 
That's, we need to note that because it'll make our balancing a lot faster. So the elements that appear only on one side, once on each side, we balance first, okay? And in time, you'll start to figure out why, but I won't explain it now. I'll let you sort of work through it and get there. But you'll start to see why that happens later on, okay? So looking at the equation, we see carbon appears only once on the reactant side in the ethane molecule and once on the right-hand side in the carbon dioxide molecule. Okay. The same applies for hydrogen. And oxygen can't be balanced first as it appears in two molecules on the product side, so here and here. Okay. Now, step three. There should be equal numbers of elements on reactant and product sides, so we create equations that represent this and solve them, okay? So if we balance for carbon first, there are two carbons on the left-hand side, right? Because remember, A is one. We always set A to one. So C equals, so there's two on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side, we have C times one. So we need to make sure that C times one is the same as two, okay? So what we say is two on the left-hand side equals C times one. So C has to equal two. Simple algebra there. We balance hydrogen next. There are six H's on the right hand side, because remember A is one. So A, one times six is six. And there are two times D H atoms on the right hand side. So there are two times D of these H's on this side. There are six on this side. So we write that down as six must equal two D. Now if you rearrange that, D equals three. Okay fairly self-explanatory. And oxygen. There are two times B oxygen atoms on the left-hand side and two times C oxygen atoms on the right plus D. Okay, so two times C, that's that many oxygen molecules here, oxygen atoms here. And there's also D oxygen atoms here. So there are, in total, two C plus D on the right-hand side. Now substituting from the previous equations, we know that D equals three and C equals two. Two B equals two times two plus three, which equals seven. So B equals seven on two, okay? Then we just replace the pronumerals with the numbers that we calculated from just before. Okay, so A equals one, B equals seven on two, C equals two, and D equals three, okay? And that's our final equation. And that's how we balance equations, okay? Those are the three or four steps that we need, and that's how we get it. So, like I said, as you get better and better with this, you won't need to go through each step, you'll be able to skip steps, but right now this is what you should do just to get a feel for it. Now, if you're worried about that seven on two, you don't need to worry. You can have it as a fraction. Some teachers don't like it, so make sure you consult with your teacher what they prefer, but for me, I don't mind having them because these numbers don't mean how many molecules, they actually mean something else. They mean how many moles, and so you don't need to worry about having fractions, okay? But, you know, talk to your teacher about it. I know lots of teachers don't like it. So if you're uncomfortable with fractional coefficients, just multiply everything by the denominator. So if I wanted to get rid of that fraction, I'd multiply this by two, this by two, this by two, and this by two, and that solves our problem, okay?